It's 11 trivia questions on sailing terminology and superstitions by new listener Mike Maximchuk. This is Trivia with Buds. What it be, and welcome to another episode of the Trivia with Buds podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Buds. Thanks for checking out my show. Today, we have a video for you on all things to do with sailing terminology and superstitions when you're on the high seas. These are from my friend Mike, who just started listening to the show, and he said, hey, if you ever want to use these, use them on the show. Now, Mike explains all the answers in great detail. So I'll be asking the question. And then the answer portion, I will kind of go over what he wrote as a sailing master. I recorded this entire episode last week, but the video got uh, jacked up. So I am recording uh, this video to replace the video last week. So if you listen to the podcast of this episode, it's going to sound a little bit different because I was able to save the audio, but not the video. But here we are. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you so much for uh, subscribing to the show so you can get new episodes every single day. And if there's a certain topic you want me to do, like sailing terminology, join my Patreon page, patreon.com slash trivia with buds for $5 or more and guarantee a topic of your choice on the monthly. All right, without any further ado, we're going to jump into this episode on sailing terminology and superstitions of the high seas from Mike Maximchuk. Here we go. All right, here we go with sailing terminology, question number one. This part of a boat, which is found in the front of the boat, is uh, also part of something you might find in many churches. What is that word? The part of the boat, which is found in the front of the boat, is also found in many churches. Question number one. Question number two. What is the name for a form of punishment and potential execution once uh, meted out to sailors at sea, where the sailor was tied to a line looped beneath the vessel, thrown overboard on one side of the ship, and dragged under the ship, either from one side of the ship to the other, or the length of the ship? What was the name of that torture? Question number two. Question number three, this is the name for a cork on a ship to plug any holes in the hull. What is that word? Number three, a cork on a ship. Question number four, what is the name for a sailboat with a single mast, typically meaning one head sail in front of the mast, and one main sail behind the mast? What is the name of a sailboat with a single mast? Question number four. Question number five, this is the name for the forward part of a ship below the deck, traditionally used as the crew's living quarters. What would that be called? The forward part of the ship below the deck used for living quarters. Number five. Question number six, what two animals are common for superstitious sailors to get tattooed on the tops of their feet? What two animals are common for superstitious sailors to get tattooed on the tops of their feet? Question number seven, what is the name for any line or rope that is used to hoist a ladder, sail, or flag, or boom on a ship? What is the name for any line that is used to hoist those things on a ship? Question number eight, what phrase gets used in common parlance, meaning to prepare for inclement weather? Number eight, what shipping uh, phrase gets used in common parlance, meaning to prepare for inclement weather? Number eight. Three questions left to go on this sailing quiz from Mike Maximchuk. Number nine, what is the name for the aftermost, that's the furthest back, and highest deck of a ship? What is that called? What is the name for the aftermost, aftermost and furthest back, which is the highest deck of a ship? Number nine. Number nine. Question number 10, what fruit is purported to bring bad luck on any ship carrying them? What is the most unlucky fruit on a ship? Number 10. And number 11, your two-point bonus question. If you're playing along at home, a catch, K-E-T-C-H, is a type of ship with two masts, the smaller mast and sail just in front of the rudder helm. What is the name of the ship where the mizzen mast is found behind the rudder helm? What is the name of that ship where the mizzen mast is found behind the rudder helm? 
Those are all your questions for this very complicated sailing quiz. Unless you know sailing terminology, this one might leave you sunk. But hopefully, you got a life raft. We'll be right back in just a second with the answers. We're back with the answers to sailing terminology and superstitious type questions from Mike Maxim Chuck. Mike, thank you so much for sending me these questions. Here's number one. This part of a boat, which is found in the bow, shares its name with something you might find in a church. The answer there was pulpit. Pulpit. I've heard of that before. Number two, what is the name for a form of punishment and potential execution where they throw you over the ship and drag you? That is called keel haul. K-E-E-L dash H-A-U-L. And Mike says that is also the name of a G.I. Joe Real American Hero Team's Admiral from 1985. Question number three, this is named for a cork on a ship. This is called a bung, not to be confused with a bung hole, which is incorrect, Mike says. That's the hole that the cork goes into and something that Beavis used to say on Beavis and Butthead. He would say, I need TP for my bung hole. But the answer here was just bung. Question number four, what's the name for a sailboat with a single mast, typically meaning one head sail in front of the mast and one main sail behind the mast? That is called a sloop. Okay, so it's the Dutch word sloep, S-L-O-E-P, but it's pronounced sloop. Number five, this is the name for the forward part of the ship below the deck, traditionally used as the crew's living quarters. That is the foxel, but it is spelled F-O, apostrophe C, apostrophe S. L-E, pronounced foxhole, says Mike. Number six, what two animals are common for superstitious sailors to get tattooed on the tops of their feet? These animals were chosen from the realization that when the boat refuses to float, there's nothing better to have around than a couple of the wooden crates the animals are kept in on ships. In the case of a shipwreck, there was really only one viable option when the lifeboats filled up. Find the most buoyant object within arm's reach, hold on for your life, and hope a shark doesn't bite off your leg. Ooh, I'm familiar with that from Sharknado. Indeed, the lightweight crates would often float, and because of this, the two rare animals that came in those crates had a higher survival rate in shipwrecks, and they were roosters and pigs. Roosters and pigs tattooed on the tops of a sailor's foot. Number seven, what is the name for any line that's used to hoist a ladder, sail, flag, or boom on a ship? That is a halyard, H-A-L-Y-A-R-D, halyard. Number eight, what phrase is used to uh, talk about preparing for inclement weather? Batten down the hatches. You've heard that before in pirate movies and things, batten down the hatches. Number nine, what's the name of the aftermost that's furthest back and highest deck of a ship? That is the poop deck. You've heard that, right, on Popeye and Things like that. Looney Tunes, I'm sure they've mentioned a poop deck, swabbing the poop deck. Number 10, what? Uh, or scrubbing? Swabbing? Whatever. Number 10, what fruit is purported to bring bad luck to ships? Bananas. Bananas. It says this superstition dates all the way back to the 1700s when many lost or ill-fated ships were noted to have been carrying this fruit to their destination. Many sailors would fear unwanted stowaways like venomous spiders, snakes, and other critters who could be lurking in their cargo. Harry Belafonte romanticized the notion of the song in the song Deo, which he waited for daylight to come and he won go home. That's a fun fact. And number 11, a catch, K-E. T-C-H is a type of ship with two masts, the smaller mast and sail just in front of the rudder helm. What is the name of the ship where the mizzen mast is found behind the rudder helm? That is the yawl. That is the yawl. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video and playing along with today's episode. We're so glad you decided to tune in on YouTube. Remember, you can uh, click through hundreds and hundreds of other videos on my channel. Go to youtube.com slash trivia with buds to subscribe. Thanks for listening. Thanks for telling a friend. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you tomorrow for more Trivia with Buds. Cheers.